Open Cup is a nonprofit coffee shop working to fight human trafficking in Houston. We have changed our operations completely. And so our coffee shop, which is usually thriving and bustling, we usually have a full parking lot and no spots at tables, has uh, just become basically a warehouse where we're processing orders. We call it Pandemic Pantry. I was hoping that they wouldn't have to completely close, and this is just such a wonderful idea because it is hard to find things at the stores now. You have mixed feelings when you come here. It's like a little bit sad because you're used to like hearing voices and laughter and um, just, you know, life. <laughs> and now it's very quiet and we're just like, let's get these things done, get the people their orders, and um, make sure we're staying safe at the same time. We're also doing deliveries within a six mile radius. We've never done those things before and we are um, having to recreate ourselves uh, just to keep up and make sure that we're able to continue to provide for our customers, continue on with our mission and also ensure that we are able to support our staff members. We use our profits to support other organizations who are doing direct service with survivors. Thank you. When I learned about human trafficking, I felt like I had to do something. And so this is what I landed on. I love coffee and I love coffee shops and the kind of culture that they build in a community. And so that's why the Second Cup model exists. We have three major purposes. The first one is to raise awareness about the issue of human trafficking. The second thing we do is collaborate with our anti-trafficking allies. We want to be strategic about the way that we're fighting this and make sure that we are being smart about how we're fighting human trafficking here in Houston. The last thing that we do is provide for aftercare for survivors. I learned about human trafficking when I was working as a middle school teacher. One of the things I recognized is that the students were, who were in my classroom were particularly vulnerable to something like trafficking uh, because of their age, because of the socioeconomic status of the communities that they lived in. And so I felt like I had to do something. So we just wanted to play our part and ensure that we were finding a way to support our customers while still maintaining significant social distancing measures. So what we're doing here is just actually processing all those orders. We have all kinds of things, just from basic house goods to cleaning products, all the way to our signature items like our house mocha and cold brew. The most popular items in our shop are uh, flour and toilet paper, another hard thing to get at the store, uh, coffee beans, eggs, and syrup. So we are make, bottling our house-made syrup so that people can make their favorite drinks at home. Um, I've been craving a chai latte, so so much and now they have chai concentrate and I'm so excited to, to have some. We have been moderately busy. Um, it's definitely not the same as running a full-time shop so we aren't having you know lines of people at the door um, but we are still having a lot of customers come in and um, choose to support us. We have an amazing team who's been working on that and trying to figure all those things out, setting it up, setting our online shop up, uh, working out all the details of what it looks like to take in orders, process them and get people to pick them up when they're ready. We've just been really grateful for all the people who are continuing to purchase through us and who are who have been really supportive. We are going to keep doing this till everyone is free. Uh, that's one of our that's one of our uh, taglines. Till everyone is free, and we really want to be here doing the doing the work that we're doing until that's true.